We started in the most basic form, which was literally hanging out of vehicles with our Ronin MX. So this, right here, is what I have the most fun playing with. As you guys saw in one of the other videos, we actually bought our next camera car, which is a BMW M3. New toy. Now this is like in its full upward position. Obviously we don't have it mounted on this side and we don't have a camera on this side to flex the whole suspension system. And this piece of equipment is big. And it's a little nerve wracking to see and it's, it was expensive. So if you think about, you've got the vertical pole on our camera car and then 65 pounds hanging off of it. It's a little nerve wracking. And it's extra nerve wracking because I know what it feels like to run it over. My light turned off, hang on. Ah. Good morning and welcome back to our second channel. Today we're talking about my favorite piece of equipment, which is not actually a camera, it's not a car, it's not a lens, it's not any sort of video equipment that you use to record, rather it's a supporting piece of equipment that helps you get the perfect shots. So, sorry, still drinking my morning coffee. We're gonna talk about this. So this, right here, is what I have the most fun playing with. It is the full Flow Cine black arm. As you can see, we've got the updated spring system. So we've got two of these on each side. Right now there's no tension, that's why I'm able to twist this. We've got the double horizon axis dampening. We've got the tilt axis dampening. And then we also have the option to add a second um, and I call this like the vertical axis, the bouncing axis, because what this does is this over here attaches to the car. And then obviously this side over here is what hangs the camera. So why is this my favorite piece of equipment you ask? I think it looks cool. I think when it hangs off the car, it makes it feel and look legit. Like we're someone special and we're here to film some amazing cars, which typically we do have cool cars in front of the camera. I actually bought this used off of eBay from another video production house in Hawaii. I can't remember the name of them right now, but when they purchased this from what I assume was Flow Cine, they optioned to have all of the extras included. So we got the really cool traveling hard case, which you can see back here. On the front of this black arm, we've got the Flow Cine tranquilizer, which is additional to the actual Flow Cine black arm. We've got this extension piece, which actually hangs after the springs and before the head with the tranquilizer. From what I understand, it helps with payload, it helps with different camera setups that need more space to flex and swing. We have got a full set of passive plates for the Flow Cine tranquilizer. We've got stiffer rubber gummies, depending also on the payload of your head that you're running. And then we've got additional springs. I believe these are stiffer springs than what is currently on here. And then here's an extra strut. We actually blew this strut out. This was our vertical dampen strut. That is what stops you know, the motion from going up and down. Um, we put about 7,000 miles on this black arm, and those are 7,000 miles of it hanging off with a camera. We shot five different road rallies last year. In 2020 was when we switched from the rig wheels isolator setup. We had bought their reverse of the cloud mount, which is actually called the slingshot. And essentially, you can actually see it right here it's hanging our projector in the basement, you know, when we want to screen movies or, or watch the work that we're working on. And that, the, the biggest difference between the Flow Cine black arm and the Rig Wheels Isolator Slingshot is that the Flow Cine, you can control damping. You also have a little bit more confidence in the overall build of this. This feels like it's built to hang expensive equipment. The rig wheels did an excellent job. And honestly, to the, to the common viewer, if I were to show you side-by-side -side footage of what the Flow Cine Black Arm can capture and what the Slingshot Isolator can capture, odds are you're gonna think that it's just about the same. The biggest difference that I noticed it are at wind speeds. 
So with the Flocini Black Arm on close courses, we can actually shoot upwards of 120 miles an hour before the, co the camera is a little too influenced by the wind. Um, and the, the cameras that we're using, we've got a DJI Ronin 2, so it's not the biggest gimbal, it's not the smallest gimbal. And then we fly a Sony FS5 or even a smaller red, like a Raven, a Komodo, something like that. We don't fly any of our DSLRs on the black arm because the payload isn't heavy enough to really get that quality shot. There's a level of like balance ratio that you have to meet with these things. So the springs and the whole system here, you can adjust that to bounce really at any weight or payload. But what's hard is if it's too light of a too light of a load, that the rebound of the springs from the system will almost be harsh or sharp, and then damping that just kind of feels you just get more vibration through the whole system, which is kind of the objective is to eliminate the vibration. Let's talk about the Flow Cine Black Arm. I think it looks epic. The way that it looks mounted to a car looks epic. As you guys saw in one of the other videos, we actually bought our next camera car, which is. A BMW M3. Myself as an enthusiast, I love BMWs, I love cars, I'm lucky to be able to film them every day and be a professional in the automotive filmmaking industry, but this mounted up on our 1 Series just looked epic. Now that we've got the M3, like I'm excited for that build process to continue. I know we've been a little bit slow. Right now we're posting about, you know, one behind the scenes video a month just because we're in our slow season. There's not much going on. We're really kind of getting our ducks in a row on this car. And then the final step after putting it together and building it into our wrapped crazy looking camera car is assembling the rig. So, stay tuned for that video. But today we're getting an up close look at the Flow Cine Black Arm. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So at this end, you know, you've got these swivel clamps. This is something that you see pretty industry standard. It's actually a very similar clamp to what Motocrane uses um, on their base system on the roof of a car. And that just bolts straight into the back of the Black Arm. Now this is like in its full upward position. Obviously, we don't have it mounted on this side and we don't have a camera on this side to flex the whole suspension system. But what this, what you want this to be is once mounted to the car, this needs to sit about parallel with 45 degrees movement up and down. <clears throat> and what that allows you to do is have maximum travel when hitting bumps on the highway, cornering, um, swinging your payload or all around. You can adjust the damping depending on the weight and the spring tension depending on the weight of the camera that you're hanging off of this end. Now over here, if people are familiar with the Flow Cine setup, you typically get a more basic version of this tranquilizer. And what that is, is usually just a cheese plate with some wire and some rubber between the two and another cheese plate where you would mount the camera. So you can see on the bottom here, this is the mount for the DJI Ronin 2. I leave that bolted up, mostly because we're always using the Ronin 2. And then this passive plate, we've got tuned currently for our payload. The system that we're running, weighs about 35 pounds between the Ronin 2 and the FS5. And then this alone weighs, I think I weighed it at about another 30 pounds. So if you think about, you've got the vertical pole on our camera car and then 65 pounds hanging off of it. It's a little nerve wracking. And it's extra nerve wracking because I know what it feels like to run it over. One thing that I've done a poor job at doing is actually capturing what this looks like mounted to the car swinging our cameras around. I've got a lot of Instagram stories showcasing the setups. I've got a lot of just kind of iPhone videos behind the scenes of what this looks like mounted on our car. All equipment aside, there are a lot of ways to capture very similar looking footage for your clients. And we started in the most basic form, which was literally hanging out of vehicles with our Ronin MX at the cars behind us that we're filming. So on Crown Rally, we hang out of convertibles and we chase the event from start to finish, oftentimes shooting a lot of handheld, but then at slower speeds, you know, 50 miles an hour or less, we're kind of hanging over the side and we're shooting B-roll of the cars rolling. Great, effective, really good shots for what it is. However, it's not safe, your speeds are limited, and if you know anything about these road rallies is that they cruise. A couple years later, we upgraded to the Rig Wheel Slingshot Isolator. 
This was kind of a big leap at the time as the Golden Peaks company was small and cash flow was tight. It was about 1200 bucks to get into, including the pipes, the clamps, and then the isolator. I think the isolator, we bought the $1,000 version, which got us all of the rubber bands and the little extra thicker wires and some nicer looking cheese plates to hang our cameras off of. And we built Camera Car, what I've been calling version one. So we kind of have a couple versions. Version one of the camera car was the one series unwrapped with the slingshot isolator. Version two of our camera car was the wrapped one series with the Flow Cine black arm. And now we're about to reveal version three. But that's still in the process, so you gotta stay tuned. However, the isolator from Rig Wheels opened quite a bit of doors. It allowed us to look more professional on set. It allowed us to feel safer and capture even better footage while, while shooting these road rallies and even around town on these commercial projects. Granted, the car was a coupe, so clients couldn't really ride in the back. That wasn't too much of an issue. They could follow in a support vehicle and we could tear deck a video feed wirelessly over to them or they would just trust us. We would show them the footage when we come back and we'd go back out and capture more if needed. Then we found a niche in these road rallies across America, basically. We're shooting for Crown Rally, we're shooting for Corsa Rally, we're shooting for Savage Rally, we've shot for the Cannonball Rally, which is a small local one near us. We're in conversations with a lot of other rallies, so we thought, how do we do this better? There's not many people shooting rallies like we're shooting, so how do we take that to the next step? And that's when the Flow Cine came in. And this piece of equipment is big. And it's a little nerve wracking to see, and it's it was expensive. But we bought this for $6,200 used with all of the accessories that you've seen from another production company in Hawaii. Now, you can do basic math. This is six times the price of what the slingshot isolator from Rig Wheels was. Is it worth it? Yes. In my opinion, yes. It was a big bite to swallow. The price tag of this thing costs more than I've spent on majority of the cameras and equipment that we have in house. So did it necessarily make sense to spend more money on the ability to capture better footage versus spend more money on a better camera and a better system? In some ways, yes, in some ways, no. But this was really the first step. And this is something that we can now use for the rest of our career. Granted, it stays in one piece and doesn't fall off the car. And we can start slapping on a whole bunch of different camera packages. So people might ask, what is the next step? Where do you go from here? And the first step we took was acquiring a better vehicle. The BMW M3 is now a four-door, so we can have clients riding in the back. It is a sporty sedan with power and get up. It handles very well and it's got space. So it's gonna be great for these cross-country road trips that we do as well. Decently fuel efficient, better than an SUV or a full-out arm car. But the next step from here would be purchasing something like a motocrane. The motocrane, in a lot of ways, is kind of the ultimate goal and it looks even cooler, it does even better, it offers very many more options for shot selection, and it's just kind of the final stage of legit automotive filmmaking from car to car vehicle tracking work. So, I'm sure in due time we'll find ourselves in a system like that, but right now the Flow Cine Black Arm is suffice, it's amazing, it's simple, which I really prefer. You've got two clamps, you've got a quick release for the gimbal, and you're bolted up.